Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we are analyzing Cuban boxing training. I feel like a big mistake that many coaches make is they go, oh, okay, I'm from Japan. I'm gonna train like a Japanese fighter. I'm from Thailand. I'm gonna train like a Muay Thai fighter. So many people don't look to other countries to look and see what they're doing with their fighting skills. And the Cubans have been crushing it for years in amateur boxing. So to not look at what they're doing and try to incorporate some of it into our own training seems absolutely foolish. So most of you guys know, if you don't already, I will quickly educate you that Cubans have some of the best amateur boxers in the world. They have so many medals, gold medals in particular, that they just stack up. And you just have to look at their training for a moment and go, oh, these guys are doing things a little bit different. Of course, many gyms around the world will have adapted their style to now be a little bit more like them, but I know from watching them and then being at MMA gyms and kickboxing gyms that they are doing things very different than the way we do things up here. So we're gonna go through clip by clip and analyze what we see. The very first one that we are looking at is the guys doing the lap around the room, but as they hit one section, they put their hands up and they do their fast spins. Why are they doing this? It's to recreate the little dizziness that happens when you get rocked. That's what I understand they're doing because I've been to other gyms before where they have you do this, but doing it while you're running is gonna help your footwork. You're gonna get to learn to move when you're a little bit dizzy and off balance. And of course, like I said, that is to help recreate that motion of you getting tagged, being like, whoa, I'm stunned, but still being able to utilize movement still. Now, as I went around and gathered a bunch of clips of Cubans training, I noticed there's a lot of shadow boxing, but it's not the way that I shadow, which is like, ah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, always trying to stay active. These guys are focused on lots of movement. They're focused on getting good technique. Once they throw, they get back to movement, they take their time, and they are trying to be very precise. In executing their game plan, which when you watch Cubans is to move around, stay at their distance, hit, hit, get back to movement. That's what these guys are doing as they do their shadow. And I think that does reinforce for some of you guys that when you are doing your shadow boxing, it should be a time to really hone in on your technique and not try and just wail away and get really wild. The next clip we're looking at is some sparring, but these guys are doing what I call body boxing. They're only hitting the torso, and the reason this is great is because you can spar without taking head impacts. So you're not worried about long-term damage or concussions consistently getting worse. These guys can stand on the inside. They can work on, okay, I just got hit, but getting good counters back. And they can work on closing off those little spaces. This is a fantastic way to train. And I don't do it too, too often. But when my brother and I were training before pretty much every day, five days a week, we would add this in at least two or three times so we could really hone in on some faster speed than we would normally do when we're throwing headshots in sparring. And a quick pause between clips to give a shout out to X Marshall. They have been sponsoring this channel for a while. They have all sorts of awesome gear that you can check out for your training needs. Be sure to click the link down below. You can save 10% on your next order using my promo code Gabriel Varga. I really like this next clip and I haven't really seen too much of this type of stuff where somebody's moving around and they're going to touch and then they're coming out with a punch, going to touch, coming out with a punch. I can assume that this is number one, to condition the legs a little bit, but more so to be like, oh, okay, we're just gonna over embellish the slip. Instead of thinking this, we're gonna get right down so that when we get used to this motion, just doing that is so much easier. And I really like his speed. He's going right from here. He's coming down, touch, down, touch. Looks really good. Looks like fantastic training. And it's something that I'm already thinking, ooh, maybe I should start adding this in because I feel a little sluggish when I go through this motion compared to him. And I think I can really improve my ability to drop and get back up if I actually train like that. In addition, we're gonna see a lot of footwork. As I collected footage, I noticed a lot of the fighters just moving around, getting their sideways motions in, and just being very light on their feet. I feel like a lot of boxers 
will tell you skipping is a massive priority. And while I haven't seen a lot of footage of the Cubans skipping, I see them essentially doing the same thing without the rope, just moving around. They'll do all sorts of things. This guy in particular at the end of his session, just getting a lot of just moving the leg around, little circles, bouncing on one foot. Obviously you're gonna get a lot of calf workouts here and you're gonna develop those muscles, but you're also just getting a massive amount of coordination that comes with doing this type of stuff. And that's what you want, just lots of coordination. Once again, now we get him moving from side to side, touching the ground just so he's getting those legs fast and explosive. Like I've already said, Cubans rely heavily on movement. So if you're able to get down to the side, touch and explode out, then when you just have to make those small transitions, maybe with a little head movement, it'll seem so easy. And then we start to see him bust into some fancy footwork patterns, just stuff like that. Look at, we heard years ago about Lomachenko being pulled from boxing and having to go in and do dancing for a number of years, strictly because of the footwork. When you see these guys move and they're doing their thing, looks a little bit like dancing. The funny thing is I am not comfortable dancing. I feel very uncomfortable doing it, but if somebody said to me, go through that motion, which I just saw once, or just float around, get used to moving like that, I feel so natural at this type of thing. So I just think that this movement and this similarity to dance just shows you how important it is to get solid footwork. Next up, I found this clip of these guys on this heavy bag apparatus and Heavy bag swings around, but before we get to that section, you're gonna see there's some wall mounted bags and the guy hits and then moves to the next one, hits, switches directions. Again, so focused on hitting and moving, hitting and moving, footwork is always there. If I went to the gym and I saw somebody utilizing five bags at once, I would go, oh my gosh, what is this? crazy person doing. But after you watch the Cubans doing it, you're like, okay, maybe there's a good place for that. If you have a few bags in a row and you're hitting and then moving, you get in front of the other one, you hit, you move. Yeah, if you're somebody who wants to stay mobile, I guess there is a good reason for doing that, for moving from bag to bag rapidly. And then next we see this sort of helicopter apparatus that goes around. So as you hit the bag, you've got to follow it. And again, it's just gonna push you to get your feet moving. You can't hit the bag and just stay here. So many people will just hit the bag in place and never get any work done on moving backwards or forwards. But on this one now you have to, you have to chase. And again, fantastic training. I would love to put something like this together in my backyard, some sort of creative bag work apparatus because it's just gonna help you in so many ways compared to a stationary bag. Next, we move into a room filled with younger kids who are all training. They all look very good, probably trying to build their way up to the national team, if not already on it. The first thing that we're gonna note is they're doing a game of tag where they're trying to tap each other in the top of the head. No gloves. No, not worrying about like power, trying to hit each other hard. It's just a game. If the guy tries to slap you, you move. You're trying to get in, hit them in the top of the head and all, once again, footwork based. If you get hit in the head, it's because you didn't move your feet. You could shift back a little bit, but I love this just slightly chill game of just tag, just moving around, getting used to throwing, but also reacting to an opponent across from you. Great work to do. I had my students do this the other day for the first time and everybody looked like they were having a lot of fun. Now, right after that, they move into something that we were already doing, which is basically, we call it shadow sparring. Now, instead of tapping with the open hands to the top of the head, you create a little bit more distance. You move around. You can't touch the guy, but if you throw, they're gonna be trying to react. If you throw and then they throw back, you're trying to react to it. So it's basically sparring from a distance. And again, I love it because we have the ability to help work eyesight. We're gonna be working those little twitch muscles. We're gonna be working reaction times but nobody's getting hit to the head. Next up, and this is something that I have not seen before outside of wrestling, it's a little game of tag towards the knees. You see them get a little bit lower, moving around. If somebody tries to touch your knee, you gotta take a step back or you gotta hollow out, but you gotta be able to get back and touch their knee. My one concern with this, which I mentioned when we tried this the other day in my kids' class, was the heads clashing. Two guys think, oh, okay, I'm gonna reach, and they lean their head far forward. Yeah, there's the danger double head clash, somebody gets cut open, somebody leaves with a headache. So really trying to keep your head high when you touch, not leaning forward. They do that, you note it. If you guys wanna try this, just be on point with that little detail. Otherwise, it's a great drill to learn 
to bend your knees, get that squat motion in, and be really fast on the reach, and be equally fast getting your feet out of the way so they can't tap your kneecap. Now I found a couple clips of some of the younger kids sparring. I believe this is one guy from Cuba and somebody from a different country, I could be wrong, but their sparring is not crazy light. But you will note that the angles from the one guy in the Olympic jersey, or the, sorry, Cuban jersey, is catching really good angles. He hits, he hits, he hits, he angles off. The other guy is trucking forward. That's why I don't think he's Cuban. You don't see that style as much. But still, it goes to show you that they do some hard sparring. They do all that tap, tap stuff but once in a while you do have to spar hard. So with all the clips that I found, there's a lot of bag work. A lot of these guys hitting bags. My brother noted that when he was in Ontario doing amateur boxing, a lot of bag workouts, not so much on the pads, at least that I could find. Looks like it's more of the shadow boxing for the timing, lots of small little drills, lots of bag work, and then they probably get their sparring in as well. Overall, I was very happy to make this episode because I had not really studied Cuban boxing training before, and I definitely learned some things, not only for myself to incorporate into my training camp, but also things that I can utilize in my classes when I'm teaching my students. This is a very fun style of boxing, one that I think has a lot of thought process into it on how to train and train hard, but also train smart and not taking massive, massive damage all the time. I believe this is why you can watch these clips and go, these guys are smart and they win a lot of medals and it's probably because this type of training. Training makes a big difference. You can be the most skilled person in the world and you'll still probably be good but one training might get you to here, and another training method might get you to here, and another training method might get you to here, and many of the different countries in the world have a very set way of training. So don't be scared to bring in other styles, other nationalities in the way they train in combat sports. It will only help you improve, in my opinion. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Of course, I hope you enjoyed the Cuban style, and I really thank them for having this amazing style, which we get to watch. As always, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another video.